Okay, thanks for coming today. Uh, while the other guys file in, let's get started. Today we have the honor to have uh, a successful value investor to come to share with us uh, his experiences applying the Graham Buffett value investing to build his successful career. And uh, James Penn, who is the principal of CP&E Partners Limited Partnership. He got a bachelor's degree in electronic uh, engineering from Virginia Tech. He got an MBA from Columbia University. This is where Warren Buffett went to and got his uh, master's in economics, right? Where he learned uh, master's value finance. investing. Right, master's in finance yeah. or economics, right. This is where the, the home of uh, value investing. So after James graduated, with an MBA from Columbia University. He worked at a value-oriented hedge fund since November 1992. That is a practical experience, practicing the craft. And then after that, after having had enough of that, he started his own partnership, CP&E Partners. In 1998, an averaged 16% net annual return. That's way better than the average S&P, and way better than most uh, of the mutual funds out there. So please join me to welcome Mr. James Pan. Thank uh, thanks, Professor Zen, for, for that uh, introduction. Um, I have no formal presentation. I just like to keep it very uh, open and honest. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, we'll and that's, we'll build on the questions that you have, and I'll try to get the points that I want through to the questions you have. So let's just keep it open, and then why don't you just start throwing me questions, and I'll see if I can answer them. About 80% 80, 80 of them will be correct, so. Questions? Let me, um, why, uh, why don't you try and explain the look-through earnings? Uh, well, okay, look-through earnings is a very important um, concept uh, in, in terms of how I, I look at things. Um, I have a portfolio of, let's just say, 20 stocks. And I'll, I'll give you an example. I own Career Education. I own 123,000 shares of Career Education, about one one thousandth of that company, actually. Um, and Career Education is probably going to earn three bucks next year. So that's 2011. It's probably going to earn 250 this year, three bucks next year, whatever the gap whatever they say on, on Thompson 1 or, or their earnings estimates from Yahoo. So the way I look at it is in 2011, my portfolio is going to get paid $3.50 times 123000 like $400,000. Now I own, cp and Partners is about a $38 million fund. Uh, and I own about half of it, so half the capital is mine. So the way I look at it, I'm personally get if CECO executes, Career Education executes, it's a for-profit education company, um, if they execute, then I personally would get paid about $200,000. Now, they're not going to pay that on the dividend. They're going to keep it. They're going to buy back shares. They're going to expand more to different campuses or increase their the programs, reinvest it back into the program. But that's sort of how I look at things. And say, well, I trust the management team. But, you know, my value in career education, my personal value is up $200,000. So, kind of, you know, the, the same is true and obviously. When, when a company makes a value-destroying decision, like they do a bad acquisition or their business is not nearly as good as they thought, and they have a, let's say, making a, a number up, like a, a billion-dollar restructuring charge as an actual cash restructuring charge or a billion-dollar liability from a, a lost lawsuit or something like that. And I own, you know, you know let's say one-tenth of the company, and I lost $100 million, basically. I mean, that's on a look-through basis. That's what it means. So I, I have like 30 of these, 20 to 30 of these companies, and I look at them. I line them up in just a simple Excel spreadsheet, and I look at the next couple of years' worth of earnings, and I just multiply that out, and I know what I'm going to earn in 2010, and I know what I'm going to earn in 2011. It's not going to be exact, and these companies are going to miss estimates, and they're not, not going to come in and, um, exactly where you think, but it gives you a ballpark, and that's all you really need. And I strongly suggest that all of you do this for your personal assets. And you look at what you're expected to earn in your personal life, so you know where you're going to go and where, where you're going to be in the next two years. And if you know, if you do that, you'll, you'll have a leg up and you can plan around that. Um, 
Um, um, so that's one of the tech, one of the techniques that I encourage you guys to do. And if you guys ever, I'll send Professor Zan an example of my spreadsheet. And he can forward it to you. And just use it as a template and fool around with it, whatever you want to do with it, and make it yours. So, I mean, the other thing I do is, um, uh, as well as look through earnings, I put what I think the stock is worth this year and next year. So I, I know what my upside is in each in each year. And so so I know ho ho if I'm right, I have a target price for this year and a different target price for next year because things are dynamic. They increase in value. They grow. They retain that earn the money they earn this year for next year. So they, they, they build value two different ways. So I know I have an estimate of, of how much money that stock is going to make me this year and next year if I'm right. And directionally, luckily, you know, I've been right directionally, but you're never right with the exact dollar amount. But the important thing is that you know directionally where the, where the portfolio is. And then, frankly, that's Darren, what happened in, in, in 2008 and 2000, the first part of 2009. Um, that helped a lot because I knew, you know, the market was down 30, 40%. My portfolio was down 27%. I knew that my companies were not worth 27% less. I knew that the earnings power would be hit that year, but the, the earnings power is basically intact. They may not have as much visibility, but that the value is basically there. So I didn't really care that the mark to market was down 30% because I knew the value was only down, you know, a few percent. It wasn't down nearly as much. So. Okay. Yeah. What percentage of your assets is uh, in cash? Uh, what percent of my ca uh, assets are in cash? Right now, about seven. Um, it has ranged, you know, to you know, fifteen percent. I I I really don't look at it. I try not to look at it that way. I just try to figure out what's the best use of my cash or or, or my capital at the time. Uh, so there's no set amount. I mean, you always like to have a little bit. Just you know, just to make you, make you feel com make yourself feel comfortable in case you have a, a 10 to 20 percent correction. So you, you know you have some some uh, firepower to take advantage of a down market. So one of the things I did want to talk about is what what I use to to pick a stock. And it's a very simple thing. I have a very simple checklist. And um, and quite frankly, even though I was in the business from '92 and started my um, fund in '98, I really didn't develop this checklist until like two or three years after I started my firm. And I lost some money, I lost some sleep, and I said, you know, this is, I really don't want to lose sleep. Um, and, and so, you know, what do I have to avoid to, to make sure I sleep well at night? And, and I came up with a, with a very simple, simple thing. And, and let me take a step back further. I'm a one-man shop. I have no part, I have no analysts. Well, I did hire an analyst just in the last month, um, temporarily. My, my younger brother, who's in between jobs and going back to business school. I hired him as a, um, just to give him some practical training. Um, but before that, I had no analysts, um, no other part, no other general partners. I just have uh, limited partners, and most of, them, most of them are quite frankly friends and family. Uh, I don't really have a um, an outside business in terms. Of I don't really actively market and things like that. Uh, and, and so, I would say 90% of the I have about 38 million. 90% is friends and family, and about 10% are people who were referred to me over time and. You know, somehow they heard of me, and, uh, and you know, you know, you know, they're they're nice people, and they don't give me a hard time. So, so, um, so that's that's my I guess my my marketing strategy or lack of it. Um,